Hello beautiful souls, welcome to the month of October. Wow, where has 2023 just vanished? Like we are towards the end of this year and I'm in the northern hemisphere so it's getting starting to get a little more pleasant, more cooler evenings. And that's when the window is open so there's a lot of chattering, a lot of kids downstairs playing but I think that's fine, right? We can have this background because I feel like this is also such a liberal vo uh, voice. Yes, I was about to say noise, but I think it's actually liberal voice, right? Uh, we are kickstarting October with the Libra season. And if you want to know more about the Libra season, I did a full Substack on it. I'll leave the link wherever you're watching it. Or you can just go to my Substack and you'll find the previous post as the Libra season. So, yeah, but Libra is all about beauty and being social and chattering and, like, communicating and, like, sisterhood. Yeah. So, that's interesting because, okay, we're right diving into it. Fourth October, we are, the Mercury enters Libra. So, Mercury has been in the sign of Virgo for a while, even where it was even retrograde for three weeks. So, it's been in Virgo for a very long time, actually. Uh, and while Mercury was in Virgo, the way that we were thinking, the way that we were talking and communicating, it was very practical, pragmatic. Our communication is now shifting into something more flavorsome, more poetic, more um social actually uh because when when i mean i don't know about you but i have been reading so much for the past one and a half two months like i was just like i need to put my screen away i need to put my box away i need to ground that's liberal energy for you okay i know right now i need to go out i need to chat i need to just appreciate beauty and nature because I have been so much in this Virgo energy and of course I'm Virgo rising so Mercury really really rules me but I've been like really reading and soaking up information a lot and I feel like this when Mercury enters Libra it's a beautiful time for us to integrate all that we have gathered so we all have collectively even if you're not a Virgo rising or a Gemini rising or anything don't have any of those placements you still have been gathering a lot of information you have been still uh, be it through people through surroundings through books through podcasts we have been gathering a lot of data okay we have been analyzing the data we have been reading between the lines we have been connecting the dots we have been really studying some things be it our life our history our um you know just like the psychological uh details of what did we do where are we going all this analyzing stuff has been happening for so long that now when Mercury enters Libra it can take a little while for us to like okay it's okay for me to do something less productive <laughs> it's okay for me to to breathe to just go out there for the heck of it to just appreciate food appreciate beauty to break the rules a little bit right um it's it's, it's a beautiful time right now to gather in groups, to um, socialize with. We're also in labor season. So, yeah, the way we are thinking, it also shifts as we start to think more about relationships. We start to think more about external world, whereas the Virgo was more about the self. And um, when the Mercury or even the Sun was in Virgo, we were really focused, hyper-focused on perfecting our routines and perfecting our, uh, our stuff. Our life organizing things around and Libra really kickstarts uh, on uh, with this October kickstarts in Libra season and when Mercury enters Libra on 4th October which will be in the next two days like last two days I've been detoxing so much if you get the time before before uh, I would really really ask you to kind of like clear out the space organize the space while the Mercury is still in work for the next two days but then when Mercury enters Libra, think about how can you beautify your spaces. Like right now, uh, I am thinking about, I'm actually pinning all the boards. How can I do up my space in a different way that is like more nourishing and more like nourishing to my mind and 
inspiring to my mind, right? More than just what's functional and productive, which is a very Virgo aesthetic. I'm going to more Libra. So Mercury rules our communication, Mercury rules our thinking. And so there is a shift from logical way of seeing and perceiving things to adding beauty to it, to adding softness and grace and to adding more uh, romanticism to it. Yeah. 8th October, Venus enters Virgo. So Venus has been retrograde, we all know, uh, for almost two and a half, three months. And then it went direct sometime last month, but it has still been in the shadow period. So now it's coming out of the shadow. And so the shadow period is basically the 15 day period, the two weeks, one, a week or two, but it's still, still like, you know, accumulating. So now it's like finally, finally, like out of the shadow period as well. So 8th October, Venus enters Virgo. And this is the time for us to like, really take on all the lessons that we have learned in the time when Venus was in Leo and even when it was retrograde because Venus has been in Leo for three months like I think since I've been doing these like May or around something May June yeah like it's been it's been in Leo for quite a while and now as it moves into Virgo, as we just talked about, Virgo is more organizing, right? So Venus, think about what Venus is. Venus is about a love. Venus is about a money. Venus is about pleasure. There is a lot of focus on beauty, pleasure, fun uh, kind of themes right now in October, right? So it is quite a beautiful month, actually. But also big one astrologically because we do have two eclipses happening here. We'll talk about it in a bit. Um... But yes, like really, really take on the lessons of the Venus in Leo. Whatever you've learned about relationships, we all have been thinking about relationships. We all have been thinking about the way we relate, the way we connect. Um, and consequently, the way we attract abundance because, you know, like you attract abundance through people, right? Um, no matter what you do. So while we've been really learning and reconsidering and redoing that aspect, it's now time as Venus moves into Virgo to start applying it, right? Like if you felt like you've not been prioritizing enough time for your hobbies, it's time to put it on schedule. If you have been noticing that you've not have been putting enough time for um, in your relationships, in your partnerships, schedule it on your calendar. Make space for it. Like how can you allow and give yourself in practical pragmatic ways time to actually make space for pleasure in your life right and um like like this is like taking <clears throat> those lessons from venus and leo and really taking it seriously right make taking it seriously and making some serious moves around it because you know how we keep on saying like one day i'll do this one day i'll write a book one day i will start reading one day i will start um listening to music one day i'll start moving one day i'll start walking around one day i'll start doing what i love to do and we never get to do that around but i feel like when the venus was in leo we really went down and i and yes please 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 i'm just talking not just talking about things that we love to do it's also about the time right i think venus in leo really really showed us that it's so vital for us to spend our time doing what we love, spending our time with people we love. Like it's so vital to our health, it's so vital to our wellness, it's so vital to our well-being actually, I have no other words. And I think Virgo really understands the wellness and well-being so well. So that's why I think that's the only word which is coming up right now. And now it's like the Virgo understands. It's okay. Yeah, we understand it. You need it for your well-being. You need it for your for your just happiness, right? So how? what can I do about it? How can I arrange your life in ways in which it starts actually reflecting in your life? Yes? October 10th so that could also mean actually making enough time for your family that could actually mean scheduling holidays that could actually mean 
booking a flight for your flights for your next holiday, probably in December or something, right? When the holiday season comes in. Um, so yeah, it's, it, or, or maybe, maybe just like taking weekdays seriously, right? As I said, just doing the things that you love and spending time in things with people that you really, really love and appreciate who nourish us, who, who, because that's also part of life. I really suggest if this is like clicking in and you want to dive deeper into what I'm speaking about, go and read Libra Season Substack. You're going to love it. We talk more about how beauty makes life worth living. That's the season about it, okay? October 10th, let's talk about the meaty stuff now. Pluto Jones Direct. So, a lot of planets have been in the retrograde for this entire July, September, August, July, August, September season. These last three months, and we've been going through the thick of the reviewing, reanalyzing, refining of our life, right? And now the planets start turning direct. Venus turned direct last month, and now Pluto turns direct. So, Pluto is the planet of transformation, power. And since May 1st, we have been really thinking. In really understanding what is a relationship with power how do we feel powerful is it by snatching power is it by putting people around us less than below us is it is it by outsourcing it outside basically or do we really really feel empowered from within Now, after this refinement and this reviewing and analyzing of it, it turns direct. And when it turns direct, again, as I said, just right now, it's all, it, right now we're hitting the season of how can we start applying these changes in our life, okay, in slow, steady ways. There's more to come, but still, we begin the process now. So, again, these lessons of, all the lessons that we've learned about our power what power means for me does power come from my money does power come from my relationships does power come from my credentials how can i feel more empowered that we've been all kind of like somewhere you know dabbling into those realms and now it's time to like when it turns direct it's time to really start a plan changes and so when it turns direct instead of brooding about what should have been what could have been i think it will be a nicer energy to work with to channel all that power into change you know like you can use all that energy into getting angry upset frustrated about what could have been what should have been or you can really use that to implement change long lasting change because pluto is the slowest moving planet and it talks about long-term changes long-term transformations all right similarly following the same advice on october 12th we have mars entering scorpio so again there can be a tendency mars is all about actions but it's also about anger scorpio mars rules scorpio so it's at home uh and Scorpio is, again, this really intense, passionate, transformational, catalyzing energy. So when Mars enters Scorpio, there can be a tendency to, um, depending on how you utilize the time of Pluto when it was retrograde, how can you, as I said, take all that power lessons and being instead of being upset about it, how can you channel it to be more productive, to implement changes? Not just in your life, but in the collective, in the community as well, and what you do as well, you know. So while there can be a tendency to be volatile, angry, um, there's also an opportunity of releasing it with spiritual practices in place. So use spiritual, like Scorpio is very, very spiritual, right? So you, I, I would say this is actually a good time to start chanting, to start having, back, going back to your spiritual practices, meditations, um, or whatever it is in your own faith, spiritual practices, your own personal spiritual practices you have, right? Um, 
because it can be an intense energy to work with because it does circle around deep healing around core wounds so it can be very triggering and very like very delicate right to very handle with care handle with caution kind of an energy um, so I would highly suggest you to actually get back to spiritual practices if you're out of it or to just like just like 10 minutes of a day right just have a chanting practice or um, whatever whatever for you just if it's drawing cards if for you it's just sitting in front of God going to a temple or whatever it is for you believe in God or not but in terms of like spirituality is Jupiter is in retrograde in Taurus right and our faith is being tested right now so when Mars enters Scorpio they can be added energy right so yeah I feel like there's a lot of call for surrendering and for really seeking help kind of an energy 14 October we finally have and our eclipse, so we are all in the eclipse season already, right? Throughout this time, we are in this eclipse season. But on 14 October, we actually do have a new moon, which is a solar eclipse in the sign of Libra, which also conjuncts the south node. And Libra. Yeah. Now, 14th October, with this new moon in Libra, it is the second eclipse in the Aries Libra uh, on the Aries Libra axis. Okay, the first one we just had in April. That's why this full moon in Aries, which just happened on 29 September, it was so powerful in releasing whatever you've been dealing with since April. Yes, um, and since April, we have been really, really going through themes of independence. We have been really going through themes of independence, really learning what independence means for us. And now with this new moon, what's interesting in that, we're not just doing it alone. We're actually learning to do it with somebody else, with people around us. We are like, okay, this is what independence means for you. This is what power means for you. You know how all of this connects, what we've been talking about? This is what all of it means for you. But now... What does it mean to like actually put it into into practice in relationships? Can you actually feel independent while you are in a healthy dynamic? It's so simple, you know, it's so simple to like, you know, there's this meme with this quote where it's like, are you healed or are you so by yourself that there's no one left to trigger you? <laughs> It's kind of that energy, okay? Yeah, it's a great energy for negotiation, partnerships, collabs. It's a beautiful opportunity for actually opening hearts and deepening intimacy in your relationships. It is a new beginning in relationships for many of us. It is giving our relationships their due time and attention that I think this whole Venus retrograde season has been really teaching us. And this it will continue to teach us the whole Aries Libra uh, season which is for the next two and two years now um it will continue to teach us what relationships truly truly mean for us um we have collectively either used relationships in very codependent toxic ways addictive ways um or we have been completely denying them okay so this whole aries libra eclipse is a whole lesson in itself to honor our independence and at the same time connect from this place of independence in a healthier more nourishing and loving way right um so yes <clears throat> really about how can you relate in healthy ways and i feel like this is now like the practical season of it our practicals are now starting so get ready if you've been healing for a while by yourself it's a beautiful time when this feeling is now going to go outwards and now the universe is going to be like show me what you've been working on <laughs> okay october 22nd mercury enters scorpio so from 4th to 22nd 
Mercury is in Libra, beautiful time to add beauty to your time, to your life, beautiful time to add um, just Venetian beauty, beauty I would say, just beauty in your life, be it through people, be it through aesthetics, be it through the way you dress up, be it the way you read, <clears throat> enjoy life, indulge in foods, cook. But on 22nd October, Mercury enters Scorpio and things get start getting spicier <laughs> because on 23rd October, Sun will also enter Scorpio. And so we will be officially in the Scorpio season and I will do a sub stack on that. So if you're subscribed, you will receive that. If you're not, consider subscribing. Um, but yes, Mercury enters Scorpio and Sun also enters Scorpio. So the mood, the season, the way we think, the way we talk, it all turns very Scorpio, which in translation is like very healing, very alchemizing, but also can be very emotionally heightened, very emotionally charged, very Scorpio is fire and water both. Okay. That's why it's called the alchemist. There's this beautiful card in this deck. Um, I'll see if I can just find it right on the top or something. But that's the al that's the card which I call it the alchemy card. It has fire and water both elements. No, and I'll have to find it. It won't pop up. Yes, this one, the Temperance card. Even though this is a Sagittarius card, but I feel like this is such a perfect description of the Scorpio. Fire and water, temper, Temperance. It's also about patience. I feel like there's a the Scorpio season starts and it starts preparing you for the alchemy or the transmutation of all the awareness that you've been gaining around your wounds that you've been getting around what hurts you what <clears throat> has been your pain story what has been just lying in the underworld you've been seeing it for the past few months we all have been doing it of course a lot depends on your personal placements as well but yeah, collectively we have been. That's just how the astrology, the energetics have been. But uh, when Mercury enters Scorpio, we are going to think more about <clears throat> how can we break those patterns? How can we actually implement transformations? So if you see the whole energy, right from Pluto to Onyx, direct, Pluto is also the Scorpio planet, right? On 10th October. While on one hand, we're still like, I feel like the Libra season is perfect perfectly timed because we need this beauty when we're taking at this really or maybe we're preparing ourselves it's like a little breather as we prepare ourselves for these um for these powerful shifts and catalysts catalyzing moments in our life um with this mercury entering scorpion the sun entering scorpion in 24 and by 28 we have a full moon happening so the whole lead up like i would say even though this is not a very heavy full moon it's quite a subtle full moon because it's happening in taurus and it's the last one um but it is really really a time to reflect back on the on the last two and a half uh, years when we have been going through the scorpio taurus axis uh, eclipses which has been all about spiritual transformation which has been all about uh, balancing our materialism with our spiritualism you know so when we have this full moon and lunar eclipse it is a beautiful opportunity to sit with the urge before you take an action because there will be a very powerful urge to just like jump right in and to just implement things uh, quickly because the Scorpio season as I said it's the water and fire so it's <clears throat> it's very catalyzing um, but yeah, take a moment, I would say. Take let the full moon pass and like let that then 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 do that. I feel like it's a beautiful time to actually look back how far you've come in two and a half years. How far have you come in your spiritual journey, your spiritual growth? How from twenty twenty one 
we started these eclipses in 2021 and we've been learning about stability and groundedness of depending on wherever you have the forest placements um for me i have i have my taurus in my ninth house and so i've been learning a great deal about expanding my horizons my mindset has gone through a whole ringer on uh, the way i see life the way i've been learning astrology and human design oh my god so grateful for this so so grateful for it um but yeah it's really really um review or not reviewing more like expressing gratitude for all that you learned all that you have um gathered you know lessons around self-love because taurus is about loving yourself taurus is about prioritizing yourself so um i think we have learned and i think with this full moon that might be a final blow or, or a final kind of like a you know stamp it on like so do you know that you also matter do you know that your self-interest is also crucial like i know for myself <clears throat> since 2021 i have been continuously been shown that while what all i do is great for the service it's adding so much value and meaning to the world i also need to look at myself i also need if it nourishes me and i have been really been forced to learn this lesson the hard way honestly so see how, much, how that shows up in your life you know how how have you learned how to prioritize yourself be it in your workplace be it in your relationships be it just in generally you know with your health do you have you learned self-interest because you know as they say if you don't have the oxygen mask on yourself you cannot put it on other people and that's so true and we all have been shown since 2021 that very some for some of us physically for some of us very mentally and emotionally yes so that's up to prefer us it starts off really beautiful and pleasant and it ends um in, from 15th onwards the energy tones just uh, like starts turning more inwards and start turning more um uh, gearing for this self-reflection and also if you're in the northern hemisphere the you know we are heading towards the towards the autumn equinox or towards the we just had the autumn equinox we are turning more inwards it's the winter phase of our life so there is a lot of reflection coming up there's a lot of like uh how far i've come celebrating yourself celebrating your life kind of an energy but uh it's also really really powerful i would use the word spiritually mentally emotionally enriching so yeah i would say do gather some beautiful spiritual resources to resource yourself through this time so that you can um enjoy the next phase of the new beginning which ushers in after uh the new moon which happens on 14th october because there is a new beginning for many of many many of us in the relationships um but yes it's transmuting pain into freedom into liberation and that's what this whole journey of transition is really all about right we are in the big transition and every month when i do this astrological transits i get to see what i was shown seven years ago when i started this journey of what this transition looks like from the age of pisces to the age of aquarius and with every every time i do an astrology transit read i get to see it and of course in my experience as well i get to see the shifts on the most human level and it's so fascinating and it's so beautiful so yeah i feel like it's a beautiful time to where our new beginnings are overlapping with our endings that's kind of like the vibe so honor the endings respect the endings let go what cannot be i think it's a very important and beautiful lesson to let go what cannot be fixed don't try to hold on to the 
ghost of the past but also at the same time if there is something which is blossoming new something new that's ushering in make space for that as well um if you haven't yet done a detox i would highly highly recommend it i did it this week and i just feel so much fresher so much beautiful so much spaciousness um do it in all areas of your life yeah I'm sending you so much love and please do reflect how can you add more beauty into your life in the first half of the month, right? It could be a nice thing as you, if there's one thing that you can just do right here, right now, after you watch this, how can I add more beauty to my life? Where do you need that freshness in your life? Yes. I am sending you so much love and I will see you soon. If you uh, are considering to work with me on a personal level, all the links down below. And um, yeah, have a beautiful October. Enjoy, like really, really enjoy life. That's the theme. <laughs>